So if you'd call the call uh, attendance, Alvin, that'd be good. Yes, uh, Commissioner Collins. Present. Commissioner Martinez. Present. Commissioner Alminas. Here. Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Miller is absent. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Jones is absent. Commissioner Ryan. Here. Commissioner Bongiorni. Here. Thank you. There we go. So we, we do have a quorum. And the, the first item on the agenda is uh, determine, request for determination of applicability for work relating to the removal of one tree and the pruning of a second tree at the property known as 12 Sabin. Um, and this is, Lin, it's Linda and Robert Souza. Right. Right. Um, this is their, it's their home. And these trees are, if I'm not, they're behind your house, right? Right on the edge or uh, close to the pond, not necessarily on the edge. Yeah, about 10, maybe 10 feet in. Okay, there we go. So that's the so, old that taken down. This is the one that you that's forked above the pitcher? That, I'm sorry, say that again? This is the one that's got a, a, a fork in it, a, a, oh, right. a crotch yeah. type, above the, but it's outside the picture here. Yeah, right about where the arrow is, is where the trunk slips. Oh, okay. There's another view of it from... Uh, oh, because, all right, we're looking straight on. I see now. Yep. Yeah. So that's the one... And and the for what did the forester say about the fact that uh, um, Alva would you would you note that uh, Commissioner Jones has made his way in? He's here. Thank you. Um, did the did the forester say anything about that that the the fork in the tree that where you said there's insects in there too? Well, we yeah. We know that there's uh, carpenter ants and termites in all the trees around here. Um, the, the woodpeckers love them. But we've had trees fall. All the all the big trees around the pond have, have fallen, except for the two that we've got. I think I don't think there's any other big ones still standing. Um, it, you can you can see them. The remains of some of them uh, still we. We had a neighbor's tree from the next door. This was some years ago, but it, um, it was leaning towards the water, but it fell right across our property and almost covered the whole hundred feet of our property. Well, so the, the one that's on the screen right now, yeah, is that the one, that's the one you want to trim? What is it, what do you want to trim on it? Because it looks like it's trimmed up pretty high already. Well, yeah, but above, you can see to the left, the, um, the dead branch there? There's the stub sticking out, and then there's dead branches heading off more towards the water, and there's more dead branches higher up. Um, we're not as concerned with that one. I, that's just a matter of the, that the branches are dead, but with the lean and the positioning on the property where it is, we're not concerned about that being a hazard to us or our, our property or anything. Uh, that one we just want to trim the dead wood away. But if the other one that if <clears throat> if the insects get far enough into that hardwood, there's the fork that I was in. That's yes. the in the right facing you to the right, that bigger trunk is leaning right towards our house. That's why the that first picture that you saw, you can't see the fork because one side is directly facing the house, the other side is directly facing the water. Um, but we, we know that the, the, they're insect infested and, um, you know, there's, that's why we've had some other branches taken down. We had a big one that was almost about to uh, land on the house. We had that removed some years ago, but um, 
we know it's just a matter of time before you can hear it creaking like when it's windy and stormy and stuff you can hear them creaking particularly that one that's right outside the door there so the the forester visited your property is that correct yeah he yes did. and what what did he say about the health of the tree um he really didn't say anything about the health of them he he said that he would give us a permit uh, right away if we just wanted to do the trimming but he said that if we wanted to remove that one in the center of the yard that um that we would have to appeal it because it's a significant tree so he's he basically was denying the removal right and he had said um he knows there's ants in there oh did he yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah i didn't talk to him the day he was here my wife said then but yeah that said, yeah, there was, he knows there was ants in there, eating it out, you know. Okay. The forester, so that's said, the, the forester said there were ants eating it out? Right. Yeah, you can see signs of it in the branches Alex that have been cut. That, yeah. if the branches that have been cut off, you can see all the holes and insects coming and going and woodpeckers digging at it. And, you know, you can see it from the looking out. We would have to defer to the forester, wouldn't we? Yeah, I, I don't. We can't overrule the forester mm -hmm. if he has said no that a tree is a significant tree, and um, in his opinion, it's healthy enough to stay. I don't believe we've got the authority to overrule him. I've never. Um, we certainly have, don't have a problem with the trimming, like he didn't either. Uh -huh. We we can't overrule the forester. So um, if if we were to appeal his decision on a significant tree, then would we have to come back and and see you guys again? Or well, I would. Uh, my suggestion would be that we continue this. Um, so that you have a chance to go back to the forester, uh -huh. uh, rather than have to refile, we can continue it. Okay. Um, and that way it doesn't have to be re-advertised or anything like that. And put it on, once there's some information back from the forester, and put it on the agenda um, right away so that you can get going with it. Okay, so we'll have to get back to him and see about the appeal. And, yeah. and based on their decision, we'll get back to you. And then and then we can, we can op we'll reopen the public hearing, get what information the new information and then close the hearing and deal with it at that point. Just out of curiosity, what's that almost looks like a wading pool there in between the two trees? Oh, that's a, it's a pool. It's a swimming pool, 14 foot. Oh, it is a pool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know it looks a little murky. We're taking it down. So we haven't cleaned out like all the leaves and, and everything that's in it yet. But. How long has that been there? Um, this one has been about three years, I think. <laughs> Did your children use it? What's what's the history? Yeah. No, our children are in adults. their fifties. Yeah, they're adult kids. So, d did you say you're removing that? We are. Okay. Just a. Um, for a point of reference, actually, you should have come before the board to get permission to put it in. And basically, if you were re replacing one that was there, it probably wouldn't have been a major issue. Well, uh, there's, there's, we've had a pool there since 1997, maybe. Yeah. And if you were if you were replacing an old one with a new one, I don't think the commission would have had a problem with that. But uh, that's anything that's that's close to the pond. That's just like you're coming in now uh, for a determination. That's how that's how that process works. Um, All right. So let us know if you're going to remove it so that we can. Well, um, what we have to do is remove it while the tree work is done, and then we're going to put a new one up to replace it. So is that is that a problem? Well, we should. You should add that work. Another reason to continue, I would amend your determination to include that. Okay. 
Okay, as part of the process, you would be removing uh, the existing pool and give us the size of it and um, and then replacing it uh, and, the, and the size of the new one. Okay, and, and we would do that on... Uh, I would do it as an amendment to this note, to this determination. Okay. You, know, you could admit you've got to file you filed a determination of applicability to cut these down. So write an amend say you'd like to amend the work to include that you need to remove that during the tree work and then replace it afterwards. And and also I would advise you give us some history how long there has been a pool in that in that area because that matters. Okay, well I can I can see if um if our records go back that far our pictures or something that See, but if we have had one there for almost the entire time we've been there, we've been there almost 30 years. Yeah, and I, I, like I said, that, that matters a great deal. If someone was coming in to put a, a new pool in, it would, there'd be a lot more hoops to jump through, but replacing something um, that is existing is different, is a different scenario. Uh, well, okay. basically, see, we have, there's a couple of, the frame of that pool is, made of metal, metal tubing, and some of them are starting to rust through. So basically, we bought another pool, the same thing, so that we could just replace the rusted rails. So if we don't take that down and just replace, replace the rusted rails, is that? It, it's maintenance. It's and, and it's, and again, I think it'd be, I think putting the exact same size pool up, I don't think the commission will look at, uh, in a negative way. So I think you'll be okay. Just tell it, just put it in your description of the work that you're doing. Okay. So now to to do the to amend that application, is there a place to do that online? I don't know. You I can just send I you can just send a written I'd like to amend the determination that I filed to include the following work. Okay. And I would send that to Phil or somebody Yes, that, to Phil. Okay. Yep. One other thing, um, in the photos, there was a hemlock tree. Right. And what about that one? Um, yeah, they suggested we remove that as well. Uh, that's pro that's probably dead. I mean, if it's a hemlock, it's probably. Yeah, there's there are some some branches pretty high up that still have pine needles on them, but. Um, it, it goes quite a ways up where all the branches have died and broken off and it, it is kind of leaning towards our neighbor's property so um they had well, most most of the hemlocks have gotten the disease around and and that i wouldn't i would expect that that one probably did too uh -huh. yeah yeah that looks yeah i would say mm -hmm. judging from looking at it that that's uh going to die a soon death anyway yeah. So I would include that as well, the hemlock. If if that's something that you that um, when you say they recommended, I'm I'm assume you're talking about the tree service. Um. Yeah. The uh, Wallace tree. Okay. And they've asked us in the past if we would cut it down. Just to, it makes them nervous. So. Um, so include that as well, because you only mentioned the two trees. I would include the hemlock and I, that was in the application, no? Pardon me? I thought that was in the application. That uh, actually I don't have it in front of me. If it was, that's fine. I okay. thought it said two trees. Yeah, it, the what I, what looks like here is two trees. It, it says the removal of one tree and pruning of a second tree. So if you're removing the oak and the hemlock, that's two. Okay, yeah, I guess I forgot to add that then. I thought I did. That's why I sent pictures. Um, so I'll, in, I'll include that. Now that's about 50 feet from the water. So that's still within the... That, it's just barely within it. Because um, pretty much there, the wa the wetlands follows the edge of water. So it's, it's, it's so it's, I mean, the, the wetlands, the jurisdiction goes 100 feet. The ordinance covers up to 50 at a different level. So if it's about 50, you're you're right in that area. So I would include that work. Okay, I will. Any other commissioners have questions? 
then a motion to continue this uh, pending additional information would be in order. A move to continue. Thank you. I think that was Frank, I believe, I'll, correct? I'll second it. Thank you, Juanita. Alvin, if you'd call the roll on that, please. Yes, uh, Commissioner Collins. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Yes. Commissioner Alminas. Yes. Commissioner uh, Jones. Yes. Commissioner Ryan. Yes. And Commissioner Bongiorni. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Souza. And when you get that information and after you hear from the forester, we'll put it back on the agenda to, okay. to uh, finalize this. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so item two is uh, a notice of intent for work related to the proposed redevelopment of the Eastfield Mall located at the properties known as 1685 Boston Road, 1719 Boston Road and 1655 Boston Road. Um, I see some, oh, there he is. Okay, Chris Lucas is here from Lucas Environmental. Correct. Good evening. I'm also here with John Hessian from VHB, the project engineer. Uh, Mr. Hessian was just gonna give a brief history of the project and then I'll get into some of the details. If it's okay with the commission, I'd like to share my screen. Please. Great, thank you. Great, hello everyone. Uh, I was gonna say good evening, but I guess it's good afternoon still. Uh, <laughs> my, name, my name is John Hessian, I'm with VHB. Um, and obviously I'm here tonight with Chris and we are both here representing Onyx Springfield Crossing LLC, um, who recently purchased and acquired the Eastfield Mall property. Um, Located on Boston Road, and it actually uh, backs up to Fernbank Road on the on the south. Um, Onyx intends to demolish the uh, entire mall, including the J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Cinema buildings, in order to redevelop the property with um, a more modern shopping center that will include, you know, retail, uh, service-oriented. Um, users or tenants and and a number of uh, different restaurant locations, fast food and, and sit down restaurant options. Um, on April 24th, the city council approved a uh, special permit for the redevelopment. And what, what you see that what Chris has up on the screen is it's just an exhibit that was shared with the city council back in April. Uh, it it kind of shows the, the new development in the orange colors. Those are the proposed retail, restaurant, and service buildings, uh, all new parking. The development um, is really, or the redevelopment is really located within the existing footprint of the Eastfield Mall today. Uh, where and Chris will get into the details adjacent to the to the wetlands and the in the work in the wetland buffers. We've done what we could to pull it back a little bit, but we have not made it, we have not extended any closer to the you know wetland resource areas than what's out there today. Um and uh I guess you know you you recognize Chris. Chris did a he filed an ANRAD for this property back in 2020, and I believe the commission issued an ORAD for the delineation work uh, in January of 2021. And 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 uh, Chris and VHB have a relationship, so we partnered with Chris. He had he was essentially the wetland scientist of record on the property, so we partnered with Chris to to work together on the notice of intent um, for the proposed redevelopment. So with that, I'll I'll hand it over to Chris to walk you through the actual notice of intent and obviously uh, as we go forward if there's any questions or um, clarifications that we can provide happy to do that before you jump off john to the to the bottom just above proposed 2024 on the left hand side that kind of odd looking piece is that part of your property it looks like that's your property line the piece that uh, goes up, that, yeah. little, that little wedge that is yes. part of the property correct um and the reason why it's not colored is um 
Onyx intends or potentially intends to come back with a, another small development on that particular portion of that, oh, that's okay. the paved parking behind the Sears building. Um, but in the short term, it's just going to remain, you know, that paved parking area that's there today with the, the ring road that connects both the mall property and the Sears property uh, out behind, you know, the okay. development that's there today. Could, I just wondered why it wasn't colored in it. So it's going to remain as is. <laughs> yeah, no proposed work on that is the the reason why that's not shown in color. Okay. All right, Chris, do you want to pick it up from there? Sure. Thank you. For the record, my name is Chris Lucas with Lucas Environmental, professional and certified wetland scientist and registered soil scientist. Um, just, just a brief history here. The, um, the, the project site actually consists of three parcels. Um, it's, it's actually shown on a different aerial, but we have three parcels of land uh, we're not touching the parcel to the south. We have no work proposed on this parcel here, um, which was previously included in the ORAD. The overall site is approximately 40.8 acres with Boston Road to the north, uh, along with commercial development. <clears throat> Kent Road is located to the east with several residential areas along the side streets, as well as the wetland complex and some upland areas. And Fernbank Road and numerous residences are located to the south. To the west of the property, we have the Sears building and, um, and Fern Bank Road continues to the west. The site's not located in any rare species habitat. There are no certified vernal pools or potential vernal pools on the site. There's no outstanding resource waters or areas of critical environmental concern. There's no mass DP wellhead protection zones. There's no bordering land subject to flooding or isolated land subject to flooding on the site, um, specifically per the FEMA maps, which um, not just for the previous ORAD, but for the for the parcel we're working on, the, the three parcels here. Um, as John said, we did have an ORAD issued. Um, there's a series of resource areas down along this parcel. Um, there's a perennial stream that flows through here, uh, under Kent Road, generally along here, through here and down off-site under Fernbank Road. <clears throat> Obviously, we have the 25-foot riverfront area offset from that, as well as the 100-foot buffer zone from the inland bank. Um, there's a bordering vegetated wetlands associated with this river surrounding the majority of it. And there's an isolated wetland located here in the lawn area. These areas were all approved through that ORAD. They're still valid at the time of the filing of this. Um, so we've shown those boundaries here. Um, to ensure that we know there are the resource areas, because we did not walk this entire perimeter. Uh, on April 25th, I did walk the entire site and we did locate another wetland system located right here. Um, it's, it appears to convey some of the drainage, but it does look like there's an intermittent swale through here, as well as bordering vegetated wetland. We flagged the outer resource as wetland C, uh, which would be primarily bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, we did not flag the internal bank as there's no work proposed there. And just as a point of reference, roughly 225 feet um, from the property line, there's an isolated wetland, again, in a similar, very, very similar to wetland B in the manicured lawn, maintained lawn area. But we're not showing that because it's so far off site. Other than that, this is really the limit of the resource areas on the site. <laughs> Excuse me, well, I just got a little flu here. Glad glad you're meeting in Zoom tonight. Um, overall, the project is proposed as a multi-use development, a redevelopment of the site with parking and utilities. Onyx is proposing two anchor buildings along the south of the property. Um, as well as 17 additional buildings, uh, mostly commercial use throughout the remainder of the property. These are going to range in size from approximately 2,000 square feet to over approximately 148,600 square feet in size. Um, park, parking has been structured towards the center of, the, of these buildings um, <clears throat> with drive aisles and landscape islands. We have the drive aisles. You can see the landscape islands in color, color here. Several special permit uses to include drive-up service windows, gas station, medical offices, and indoor place of amusement are proposed or will be. Onyx doesn't currently have any tenants identified at this time. Um, we're going to be using the two existing curb cuts off Boston Road. No additional curb cuts are proposed and no access to Fernbank Road is proposed through this um, redevelopment. Our work is limited to the 100-foot buffer zone to the Inland Bank and BVW along the southeast of the site as well as the 25-foot riverfront area. We have no work proposed in any other resource area, so nothing in the bank, the BVW, land under waterways, 
or the IBW. We're not touching any of those areas. All the work in the riverfront is limited to degraded areas, so we are not getting any closer to the river. And in fact, we're proposing a 785 square foot reduction of impervious area in the riverfront with this project. Um, and this what, is, uh, Chris, what are you going to do? You're gonna, is that going to be grass area? Is that going to be a vegetated area with wildlife? What, it, what is your proposal for that area? So this 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 graphic here is a blow up of the southeast corner. Here are the two anchor buildings. Um, right. th this area here, this this area in red is showing the impact in their hundred foot buffer zones. Um, this is that new wetland sea we identified. The area in blue is the area of impact in the riverfront area. Um, so you can see here that little green strip is going to be you know we're going to loam and seed it um, with um, I think we have proposed a conservation mix so. That, that, that small area there will be restored and the rest, and we have some landscape islands in the buffer zone. Um, so we're we're generally maintaining the existing grade of the of the site development. So we're, we're not getting any closer, but this is the, this is really the impact area of the project. So, um, you're, so you're using a, a conservation mix, basically something that you're gonna mow once a year, uh, that kind of thing. I believe so, John, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's what we proposed. Correct. That's the in, the intent. It's a um, it becomes a pretty narrow area, so there's not that much that we can do. But yeah, conservation mix adjacent to the resource areas would be what uh, would be proposed there. Okay. Um, so for for the for the stormwater for the site, just briefly to to provide that the front portion of the site um, and the existing building. Um, the front portion of the site in the existing building drained to an outfall uh, directly to the to the wetlands, and the back portion of the site discharges through the drainage system to an, a, a detention basin that's existing here. Um, what they've proposed now is the front of the site and the ball building will be conveyed to the same area, but they've reduced that by, um, excuse me, the, the southern portion of the site will drain uh, let's see, hold on, apologize. Um, I wanna make sure I get this correct. The Southern portion of the site going to the existing detention basin was decreased in size. So the impervious area of that was decreased by approximately an acre. So there'll be less um, flow going to the detention basin. And the front portion of the site, which is currently discharging to this location here has been increased by an acre. To account for that, they've added perforated pipe and stone trenches along the conveyance system to help reduce the amount of flow and increase the groundwater in <clears throat> groundwater recharge. Um, overall, on the site, we're reducing the impervious area of the entire site by approximately 2.9 acres. So no new stormwater is being proposed. Um, for the areas that are directed to the southeast, we also have infiltration trenches. Um, we've also, all catch basins, whether they have them now or not, will have deep sump hoods and oil debris traps at the outlets to provide a better TSS removal. Um, we're also proposing several water quality units at the rear of the site before entering this detention basin, which is located approximately here. Erosion controls are proposed around the perimeter along this edge here. They'll consist of straw bales, we'll have silt fencing, silt sack sediment traps around the catch basins, and erosion control blanket slopes installation is needed, and a stabilized construction exit. The project com fully complies with 310 CMR 10.58 number five for redevelopment as all work is in existing degraded areas. Um, I could go through the standards, but we do fully meet standards A through E. Um, and you know we, we, we fully comply with each of the standards for work in the riverfront. An alternatives analysis is not required for this type of project. Um, furthermore, under your ordinance, we, we understand there's a minimum 50 foot undisturbed buffer. Um, we do not have that here. All work in the buffer is already degraded and developed. Um, and again, we are increasing the previous area with some landscape islands here. So, so but you are going within the 50. Um, not, not that I'm saying it's not permittable, <laughs> but what you need to do is, is put in language that shows how the work that you're doing will actually result in better than it was prior. And that's to meet the ordinance. 
And I believe we demonstrated that in the notice of intent that we are improving the existing conditions on the site, particularly in the riverfront and overall throughout the site, especially with the stormwater improvements that are being made. Although we have no new stormwater, we have numerous considerations throughout here with, you know, um, better groundwater recharge, better TSS removal. Um, and John can get into more detail if needed on that, but we have a, a pretty significant improvement of the overall site, particularly with three acres and reduction of impervious, I think is pretty substantial for a redevelopment these days. Yeah, no, I wasn't insinuating that it wasn't an improvement. Uh, just for the sake of the ordinance, maybe a line or two that says that, you know, to comply with the ordinance, all the work has created a much improved uh, without something, just something in there referring to the ordinance, that's all. And we we, we did not. Go ahead. I was Go just going to say, Chris, just to regarding the um, the perforated pipe and, and to provide that recharge, that was um, actually at the recommendation of Chris Signoli, uh, DPW. Uh, so we had met with Chris very, very early on, um, and that was something that Chris brought up. Uh, so we incorporated that uh, into the design to be responsive to his recommendations. Right. No, no, I, I know you've done, in a lot of filings, they'll actually put towards the end, they'll put city ordinance and just all the work mentioned above results in an improved condition post-construction than pre. And that's, it's just in there and it codifies everything. That's all. The conclusion statement. Right. Yeah. Okay. Understood. And and just to, to that point, sir, we we did have a section specifically in the NOI referencing the city of Springfield wetland ordinance. We referenced your fifty foot. We noted that there's no work in undisturbed portions, and then in the summary, we note that our opinion is that we have no impact um, or no adverse impact or permanent adverse impacts on the Wetlands Protection Act or the ordinance. And then we go through a bulleted list of why. Um, so I, I think I think that addresses your comment there. Well, it, it, it does 90% of the way because our, our ordinance is specifically written that it can't, that not that there isn't any adverse, but there, there is actually an improved. Understood. And you clearly have shown that with all the work you're doing. You just didn't put the, that extra line in there. There's no adverse effect in, 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 in actuality, an improved buffer zone. Okay. Couple of sentences. <laughs> nope, understood. It just, it, you're not the only project we deal with and having them, we always try to make sure that they acknowledge the ordinance and you clearly have gone above, you've done, you've met it. Uh, at least in my opinion, you have. Um, so did you see, by the way, the letter that came today um, from, with, the, with your file number? We did. We did receive the file number 294-0628, and DP did have a comment that the commission should consider including a special condition in the order regarding the maintenance requirements that must be conducted by the current or future owners. That will be an ongoing condition even when a COC is issued, um, and then see the long-term stormwater maintenance measures noted in the report. Um, we have no issue with that. So Okay, so what we'll basically do, you, you've got a maintenance plan in the report. So we would just put a special order um, in there saying that that maintenance plan would continue even beyond the expiration of the per The permit's only a five-year permit. So. Understood. Um, Which is kind of common for us. Anyway, I'm not surprised he put that in there. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, other than that, that's that's the presentation. If you or any other members have any other questions for John or I. I'll open up to any any uh, commission member that has questions. I, I I think you were very thorough, and I I see a much improved area. Um, I'm glad to see you put a lot more green space up by the edge of the road. It appears as though you're making it um, a more appearance friendly up by Boston Road. So I have a quick question. Um, I have a quick question. The the in the parking area the the green space where the trees are how wide is that it looks pretty wide when when you think of a space there do you know where you're, you're the, 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 uh, they comply with the 
the city zoning ordinance, and I, I'm drawing a blank whether they're 10 or 12 feet wide, but they're not. A lot of times in a parking lot, you'll see something as narrow as six feet. So these yeah. are, you know, these look well, because it, right they, according you know, to the parking space. These look pretty wide. Yeah. Yeah, the city's zoning requirements does um, does have a, a a little bit more generous requirement there for that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yep, we've met we've met that, and they do provide if, uh, they do they provide an area large enough that should provide for healthy trees and vegetation. You know, uh, for the you know for the life of the project, Th those narrower landscape strips. You know the the trees and vegetation just really can't get the water to the roots, so right. they they look a little dwarf for their for their lifespan. This will provide a nice shady parking space too. <laughs> yeah, hopefully in 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 time, not not right out of the gate. You know, <laughs> they'll need yeah. a little time. I was listening to the to the to the hearing before, and I'm thinking, you know, they're they're cutting some down, but we're trying to plant some new ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one one other question, and it isn't. It's just out of my curiosity. Um, when you when you demolish the the other buildings, where where does that go? Just out of curiosity, do you know where where it's being taken? I mean, um, specifically, no, I I don't know to what particular landfill, but the, all that material, you know, will be sorted. So you know. Anything metal that's recyclable will be recycled. Um, you know, concrete. There's a lot of concrete. Obviously, that that can be crushed, and uh, if, if it's needed, some of it may be reused on site to not have to require. Right. You know, as as uh, structural backfill for you know any grading required, um, and then all the interior. Um, you know, drywall and and things of that nature go to you know a, a, a typical landfill or recycling. What can be recycled will be recycled, um, and other stuff will will need to be taken to um, you know a landfill. But it it's a big segregation project um, to to and then to use use or reuse what you can and, and make sure the other stuff goes to the appropriate um, facility. Because that's a whole job in itself. I mean, that's an incredible oh. undertaking. Yeah, the demolition out here is going to be a pretty big um, effort. Thank you. You're welcome. Do other commissioners have questions? Francis I does. And or comments. Francis, I can't see you, but I, I just heard you. Oh. So yeah. I'm assuming you do. You can't see me? Okay. I anyway. can now. Yes. I can now. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to start with the gradient on the east side where it, it, it abuts the, uh, the wetland. Do you have any, any numbers for us over there? Up below Boston Road off to the east. You see, you see the concentric lines? I assume those are elevation gradients. The, these lines here? Yeah. Th those are the resource areas. Those lines, um, I can pull up the detailed plan, but this was just the color rendering. This shows mm -hmm. the bordering vegetated wetland and then your 50 and 100 foot buffer. So this is the BVW. Um, the stream was coming through here. So these are just the various offsets of the um, of the resource areas. The elevation lines are existing, Chris. Uh, the, uh, well, this, this, this doesn't really. Uh, the ones off site, they're existing, aren't they? These off site, this is these lines are the resource areas, not the grades. It's not the topography. Okay. It's not the topography. Okay. I can pull up the grading plan if you'd like. Well, you're not doing any grading off site, though, right? Correct. We are yeah. not grading anything off this site, off the edge here. Okay. Uh, following up on Juanita's question, the amount of paving, um, what, what percentage of paving is that to buildings and and green space. I have a green space question also. You got any percentages for us? That looks like a lot of parking. It, for decades, we have been so uh, despondent over the amount of that parking area, you know, uphill to North Road, uh, Boston Road to the north. And um, this still looks like quite, I was hoping there would be more trees and shade as Juanita has said um, that looks like a lot of central parking 
Any comment? Uh, John, I'll defer to you. I mean, I could, I could say that we have a net reduction of close to three acres here of impervious. Beyond that and the requirements, I'll have to defer to John. Um, the specific square footage of pavement, it is, a, is as Chris just said, it's an overall reduction in impervious area. The So the number of parking spaces meets the, the city zoning requirement for the proposed uses out here. Um, and as we, we discussed with um, Juanita's questions, the landscape, longitudinal landscape islands to break up the parking meets the city zoning requirements for that provision. Um, so it it out there today, there's not a tree within the parking lot, the entire parking area for the mall. And, and I, I think for Sears next door too, there's, there's not a tree. So we, um, we've, we've done, you, you know, we've done what was required of us. I, I guess that was one of the things we, when we went to city council, that was important was that we went in with a, a project that did not require any zoning relief. Um, so we've met the city's requirements and, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I do believe to the conclusionary statement, you know, about the 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 local bylaw. I, I think we've gone, you know, we have met the intent of both the the, the local bylaw and the, the you know, not that it's th this board's or this commission's jurisdiction, but the local zoning uh, bylaw also. There, there are a lot of trees. I mean, the, the, I, I haven't counted them, but but. Do you have a number? Because there are a lot of trees in those parking lots. It's, um, I thought I had the number somewhere. It, it's like 700 trees. Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, because there's just 10 almost in each one. Right. So that's, there is a lot of trees. You're talking post-construction, right, Juanita? Pardon? Yeah. You're saying post-construction. Right. I'm, I'm talking about the parking lots with the with the tree belts. Right. They're pretty wide tree belts, and they have. There are a lot of. You said seven hundred trees. I'm trying to it, look that number up right now because I know we discussed that before we went to city council. John, while you're still looking, I have a question about that. You you've mentioned that the. Um, trees that are compacted into those interesting little uh, tree belts often are very small. What, uh, what are the dimensions and the, uh, the green space ar around your designated trees in the parking area? Yeah. What, I mean, are they, are they four feet? Are they five feet? Are they three feet? Horizontal. We're just, pull, just pulling up the the site plans here, I won't share, but I'll get the, um, so the, all those, those landscape islands, so I, I can clarify Juanita's question there, they're 10 foot minimum. Um, so that Excellent. provides a 10 foot wide planting area for those trees. And then the spacing, I need to jump to the landscaping plans. Um, no. John, I can pull that up too if you need it here. It's gonna roughly um... ten feet. That's that's a, that's good size. Yeah, correct. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad to see that you've met, you know, quality uh, islands space. And so. Uh, <clears throat> I'm 18, one, two, three, four, five. I'm satisfied with your description so, of, of the tree. 10 so the trees are about 45 feet apart, 45 feet on center. So if you, so each tree has an open space, a green space around <laughs> it, 10 by 10 by 45, half of that on one side and half, half on the other side. So it is a pretty generous um, and should provide, you know, a good opportunity for, you know, long-term healthy vegetation to, to establish. 
Well, I've just put my clapping hands up. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying, I have multiple monitors. I'm trying to like pull stuff off the site plans to answer your question. So I apologize. I, I missed your I, clapping hands. <laughs> I was teasing Chris. Go ahead. Thank you very much for your answers. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there other questions? <laughs> And I could see your clapping hands as they came up. Your your little picture in the bottom right hand portion of my screen while we're screen sharing. Uh, are there other questions before we stop screen sharing? Are there any other commissioners who have questions about the plan? Looks good. Okay, so hearing none, if you can, Chris, you can stop screen sharing, and we'll bring everybody back. There we go. You so I have one I, question. I, yes. Go ahead. Do you, know the, do you know the name of the river, the stream? I'm just fascinated. It it's unnamed. Um, oh, but unnamed. It, okay. Thank you. That's it's okay. um, tributary to. Give me one second. North Branch. It's yeah, unnamed was, tributary to the North Branch Mill River. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know that it ever had a name. I'm sure that the kids in the neighborhood have given it a name over the years, but I don't know that it has a formal name. I've never seen one on a plan. Well, with Chris's advocacy for the environment, we should name it Lucas, Long <laughs> Lucas River or something. I appreciate that. <laughs> Excuse me. Hearing, if there are no other questions, we do, gentlemen, we need to continue because we're in Zoom um, and to give public the opportunity to give any comment. And they would do that by calling 787-6020, is that correct, Alvin? That's correct. Or email by? Uh, P. Dromey, that's uh, P-D-R-O-M-E-Y at springfieldcityhall.com. Okay, so for the public, that was, and you have, you have a period to comment, because this, this will be continued to our next scheduled meeting, which is, I would anticipate two weeks from tonight, at which time we would close. Um, so is there a motion to continue this to our next scheduled meeting? I'll Anyone? make a motion. <laughs> Thank you, Juanita. Is there a second? Uh, second. Uh, second. Thank you. I think that was Clarence, right? So Alvin, yep. if you call the roll. Yep, and for clarification, the next meeting would be June 13th, Tuesday, June 13th. Thank you. Moreau, uh, Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Martinez? Yes. Commissioner Alminas? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yep. Joe Ryan? Yes. That was Ryan. Commissioner yes. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, thank you for the presentation. It was an excellent presentation. I'm sure a lot shorter than you had before the council, but the <laughs> and, and 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 it's a real improvement to that area. That area is like has always been an eyesore. This is going to look it, good. I agree with you, Anita. It's been yeah, just blacktop jungle, you know. And we look yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thank you. Appreciate you, Todd. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't think we have anything under item three. Any other matters? Unless any member of the, of the commission have something. I just want to add that we do have a, a few, um, can, uh, what do you call it? Uh, things that need signature. Um, <laughs> the orders of condition. We have a, a couple of orders of condition that need signatures. Um, and particularly, uh, Commissioner Jones, I need your signature on a couple of documents. Um, is there any way that you can come in, or, or would it be better if I bring it to you? Uh, how long are you there tonight? I can come right after the meeting, if, if, if that's possible, or I'll just... Either way, you can come to me, I can come there right after, or I can come tomorrow, because we can get it done. Okay, I'll probably be here for another 15 minutes. I don't know how long it takes you to get here. All right, so I'll come by there tomorrow. Uh, for noon time. Okay. All right, we'll look out for you. Yep, and typically right. they'll be at the front window. I believe I signed them all already, didn't I, Alvin? Yes, yes. 
So they'll be at, at the front counter with uh, Kathy or. or but you just tell. Okay. Who, I, I think I signed him. I, I'm not even sure, but I think. Yeah, I, I think we were missing. Pretty sure you did, because I think you signed okay. before I did. Yeah. Okay. I was there yesterday. You both have signed and I've signed. I have a question for Chris or Elvin. Um, there's a number of, of duplicate pages. I didn't understand why there was so many pages to sign. The everyone that we yeah. sign has two. One goes in our files and one goes uh, to the applicant. So every single yeah. thing we issue has two originals. I'm still learning. Thank you so much. And and the applicant has to is supposed to then go file that at the registry of deeds. So that if that property is sold, it is picked up on. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay. Then a motion to adjourn. Anyway, to close. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll it. Oh, no, Peter did. I think it was Peter. Or somebody. Okay, Elvin, if you'd call the roll. Okay, Commissioner Bonjourney. Yes. Commissioner Ryan. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Alminas. Yes. Commissioner Martinez. Yes. And Commissioner Collins. Yes. Thank you, everyone.